Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. There's been a, a few developments with the Old Red Go Ultra over the last few days, the most important of which, in my opinion, is that I've been able to get the GUI version of RetroArch working thanks to some help from both Shanti Gilbert from MU Elik and Johnny on Flame for his rotated SDL2. So what that means First of all, there's several systems like Easy RPG and Game and Watch, things of that nature, that didn't actually work with Retro Run. Those do work here. And more importantly, we now have the Retro Arch GUI, which gives you full access to the controller configuration, menu settings, video settings, you can use bezels, overlays, shaders, all that good stuff. Start and select will get you in. And then you want to press the bottom right button twice to exit. The only systems that are still using Retro Run currently are Saturn and Dreamcast because Crash Override has done a very good job with Retro Run and they just work better there. The only reason I'm not using it is because I prefer <coughs> sorry, I prefer the GUI to allow me to configure settings and do what I want to do on the fly. Clearly I gotta fix Ardu Boy. This is Palm OS. We're currently at 110 systems. CDI does work, but I still got to fix it a little bit. As you can see, too, the, the bug with things being laggy when launched from ES is also resolved. <clears throat> Arcade is for Final Burn Alpha, and we have MAME and MAME 2003, non-year and 2003. Tiger and Konami LCD are also back in this build, as well as, obviously, this Neo Geo CD. Game & Watch is not working. Nintendo DS I actually haven't tested, and I'm weary to do it during a video because if it doesn't work or I have no controls, I don't have much I can do to fix it right at the at this exact moment. From looking through this list, I can immediately tell MSU1 is missing. Virtual Boy is now working as well. As I was saying, these here, Sega Saturn, Atmos Wave, Naomi, and Dreamcast, these are the ones that are using Retro Run. It does take a moment to open, but not really a big deal. With Retro Run, you want to use this top button here to exit. I knew the controls, it would probably help. Good enough. This is the memory unit for the Dreamcast. As you can see, there's quite a lot of different systems that are available here. Also, because I'm using Retro Arch instead of Retro Run, you are able to use zip files. You don't have to unzip them anymore.
I also need to add a Mega CD TV. These aren't in the theme currently, but they do work. They also support background artwork, the Konami and Tiger LCD, as you can see here. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know it works. <coughs> Excuse me. I wasn't done there. Actually, you know what? Intellivision is something people really enjoy, obviously. So... The importance of adding RetroArch here is it doesn't matter what game you're in outside of Dreamcast and Saturn, you can, any game, press start and select here, these two buttons, bring up this menu. This is an in-game menu, so you can go to core options, if there are any for that core. But almost more importantly here, you have global settings. So, for example, if you decide this doesn't look right to you, you want it to be full screen. Well, you can change that, you can stretch it if you want. Or if you don't like the fact that there's borders here and you don't want to stretch it to full screen, you can put a bezel or things like that. You can use a CRT shader overlay. Just things to improve and enhance your gameplay experience, basically. I haven't tested Mega Duck. I guess I gotta fix that. Scum VM, because it's a pain in the butt to create dummy files for all your games. I set it to just launch the core directly and then you can just add your games here and they'll stay in a list. Also, yeah, we have ScumVM again. I may have to fix this too, I haven't tested this. I know what the problem is, I forgot to add the cores. So outside of this here, right underneath you're going to have a RetroArch option which will allow you to just launch the GUI if you do want to do that for some reason. Maybe you want to test different cores or test new cores or something. I went ahead and added Shy Love and Lutro back because honestly I like Flappy Bird and I make this build for myself and then I just share it so I put Flappy Bird back. So there's a, a global overview of the system. The largest SD card that I've tested it with is 256 gigabytes so far. It does work with XFAT or NTFS, but I've had an occasional issue trying to copy stuff over to the SD card or the ROMs folder with XFAT, so I've kind of just started using NTFS. It's of course a personal preference, you can use whatever you want, as long as it's XFAT or NTFS. You know. I pressed the wrong button. There we go.
I believe there's a <coughs> FPS counter here. So there it is. Okay, let's try that. So all in here, I'd, I'd say God of War is absolutely playable. I got the occasional momentary stutter, but nothing serious, nothing that would affect gameplay. And I pressed the wrong button. Twice, somehow. But, yeah, generally speaking, uh, I'd say this is definitely a massive improvement from the original Odred Go, or Odred Go Advance, I should say. It works very well. I don't have any huge issues or complaints. GameCube obviously does need some work. But I do have high hopes we can get better performance out of that as well. Obviously, N64 is using standalone Mupin, or Muppin, however you want to pronounce it. PSP and N64 are the only standalones currently in use. Saturn and Dreamcast are retro run, and the rest is entirely through RetroArch. Let's see if anyone's paying attention enough to notice the difference with what I just did here. Again, with the standalone, you use this button here. Does anyone in the comment section know what that is? Zelda 64, Dusk and Dawn? Seems to be working fine, though. Alright, so to summarize, we have Retro Run, Retro Arch, a couple of standalones. I'm working on adding an OTA updater for both themes and just downloading cores and whatever in general. And everything's progressing perfectly fine. The gray bar here is because the battery icon and the icon bar that would say, you know, Odroid or Retro Arena is also missing currently. I am working on FCA Mod ES instead because it has a few more options. The current holdup there is that every time I install libsdl2 dev it breaks the current SDL build, which is necessary for RetroArch. So that's a pretty big problem i got to figure out. Other than that, though, everything else is going good. I'm waiting for a, an update to the base image from Hard Kernel that should have a few tweaks and additions to it, and then I'll rebuild all of this on top of there. But all in all, it's coming along very well. I don't have any serious issues or problems with the device, which is important. Um, everything works good so far. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.